Thank you so much for sitting down with us. We're here today with Sarah Sheldon, and she's going to be speaking with us a little bit today about the role of women in warfare in the 20th century. Big subject. Yeah. Um, so in the book that you edited, uh, Her War Story, you bring together a compilation of excerpts by various uh, female authors writing about their experiences and perceptions toward modern warfare. And you show us how women have become involved with warfare in many ways, how they have been advocates and critics, and how it has been almost impossible to avoid war, as it is extremely prevalent in our culture. So, with Leon Panetta's recent lift on the ban of women in combat, what do you see as the new role of women in war, and perhaps any subsequent effects on society? Well, I think it's going to grow. And obviously women are going to take an even more active role. I'm always a little concerned. Women should be in, they should have equal rights with men in warfare. But on the other hand, war is bad. <laughs> we don't like it. So what are we going to do? Uh, and hopefully women have a slightly different feeling about war. I think I can show that. I do show that in the book I did. And I think Juan shows it in some of the, the work that we do. Um, I think women have a very long-term view of the, the world and their families, and, and so they, they really don't like what war does at all. <laughs> Not that anybody really likes it. But um, I think, uh, hopefully, women will play a stronger role in diplomacy, too. I mean, I, we saw that with Hillary Clinton, and I think that the whole move towards diplomacy rather than military means to the ends that you're seeking mm. is a huge and powerful thing, which I think is really happening. So, and I think women are good diplomats and will play more diplomatic roles, and in that sense, uh, they will be able to change the world the way we hope it will go. You know, we all get asked so many times for money, and there's so many good causes out there, and so, you know, the need is so great in so many places that your funds can be used, and it's hard to decide. And so I just, my heart is with all of you as, as we each face that kind of issue. Um, but one of the things that, that for me has come, this area of women, peace, and security is it's a new thing. I mean, before you thought of peace and security, and that was primarily a, a male-created uh, field, and it consisted of arms control and military peacekeepers and force and treaties. Um, the, the larger foundations, Ford, Carnegie, MacArthur, they kind of helped create this field of peace and security. And then, you, on the other hand, you have women. And that tended to be focused on helping, uh, you know, women trafficking, uh, women, female genital mutilation, violence against women, women as victims. And what I'm coming to find is that it, it is the women who are the solutions. And there are so many reasons for that. Um, and part of what I'm trying to do is, is I'm finding a niche in this bringing together of those two fields working on for the peace and security field on why if you want peace and security it is critical to have a gender lens and all the funding should be looking at where are the women are they involved how are the women impacted have they been part of the planning process and and so trying to merge those two together and what we're finding is that I mean, you know, we've all been working for a long time, and I've been involved with Juan for some time, that it's very important to, you know, how do we bring women into everything? And, and you know, my personal feeling is that, you know, we're at a place in the world now where it's critical 
that what women have to bring to the table is necessary for, um, you know, for, for our future, for our survival. <laughs>